Hello everybody, welcome to the old school game snob channel and today we're going to be taking a look at the Drake Caterpillar. I love this ship, I'm sure a lot of you do. Um, but I thought what a better way to take a review of the Drake Caterpillar than by participating in its primary role, the trade run. So we are going to do a quick trade run here. We're going to get a little bit of uh, distilled spirits from the Terra Mills farm and we are going to bring that back to Port Alasar to sell at a nice little profit. Um, but on route I thought I would talk a little bit about the uh, Caterpillar because what I really love about this ship in addition to its extremely large cargo bay which is about what is it 500 and um, right around 550 units of storage I, I'm not exact on that uh, but the point is that it has the largest cargo storage of any ship in the game. And uh, for its size and for its ability to transport cargo, it is actually really quite nice to fly. You may find uh, maneuvering this craft is actually a lot easier than something like, say, for example, the Anvil Karak. So let's see here. I'm just going to come up on the farm. Uh, another thing that I really love about the Drake Caterpillar is its size 3 shield system. That is a powerful shield. That is right uh, up there with the Origin 600i jump. Uh, it is the same as the Anvil Karak. However, the Anvil Karak has two size 3 shield generators whereas the Drake Caterpillar only has one size 3 shield generator. But what that basically means is that the shielding on this ship is going to be able to tank most light fighters, even heavy fighters, most of what they can throw at you. Any single attack ship is going to have an extremely hard time getting through your shielding. Um, and interestingly enough, this, this ship actually comes with uh, two turrets which have size 4 guns apiece and the pilot himself actually has a decent supply of weapons uh, including two gimbaled size 2 guns and uh, two, uh, two turret mounted size 3 guns. Everything's on a gimbal basically so that uh, you have that assisted targeting which is very important uh, when you have a larger ship it can be very difficult to shoot smaller ships I'm actually going to take this uh, ship into a little bit of combat later on in this video and we can we can test out just some potential potential strategies in defending your Drake caterpillar if you get attacked um, but this ship was actually designed to be able to get away and and uh, protect its cargo. Uh, like I say, those two size 4 turret guns and the pilot having guns of his own, a decent arsenal of guns of his own, is actually pretty damn effective, pretty damn powerful in terms of guns. Now like I say, the, the trick and the challenge is in aiming those guns, especially at smaller vehicles, but smaller fighters or whatever, but we're going to experiment a little bit with, around with that and see if we can come up with a bit of a strategy for for that. Um, okay, so if you have never done a trade run before, well, they are extremely relaxing. Uh, it's the space trucking of the Star Citizen universe. There's some, we will get some distilled spirits here. Max available stock. So let's see, only 37 SCU. That's not very many. Uh, of that 564 SCU, to be precise. I said it was 550, but 564. I'm going to grab some of those anyway. That's okay, this is just for demonstration. Uh, you would probably earn around 80,000 credits per run uh, for distilled, distilled spirits if you were loading up your Drake Caterpillar to capacity, and it's a pretty quick and easy run. The um, Port Alazar, uh, there's a guy in a fighter ship. Hmm, in a uh, Wukonir. I wonder if he's got anything uh, hostile in mind. I kind of hope he does, because it would make for an interesting video. But if I were actually trading, 
uh, I might not really want that so much. But yeah, anyway, so uh, one of the important things to know when you when you buy a Drake Caterpillar is actually how to get to your bridge. Um, the easiest route is basically this. Don't look to the back door, look for the lower hallway access. That's the, the door you're headed for. Straight through that door, straight to the end, and you're going to hang left after the engineering access, straight to the end, into the stairway access, straight to the end, to the center hallway door, turn left, straight to the end. It's basically a bunch of left turns <laughs> that get you to the command uh, seat. It becomes a bit of a reflex after a while. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is head back to Port Alazar. I'm honestly kind of hoping that that guy was a, was a pirate he <laughs> might attack us because I think that would be kind of fun. Let's see here. Let's see if he was. We'll give him a minute. Give him a minute to make his move. Okay, well, that's that. Let's head back to Port Olisar. Well, anyway, I won't go so far as to land and uh, sell the cargo because that's kind of not that interesting to watch. Instead, what we will do is we'll go look for some NPC fights, see what we can find, see how the ship holds up in a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of battle. Okay, so instead of finding an NPC to shoot at, I actually ended up getting attacked by a player in a vanguard. So the following is the battle that uh, ensued. Um, what I actually ended up finding out was that even though I previously said that the nose turns on the uh, uh, caterpillar were gimbal assisted, it seems that that was incorrect. It seems that the nose turret guns are not gimbal assisted and I actually found that out a little bit later as they were not really syncing up and I ended up switching to a non-gimbaled uh, firing option which uh, then at least allowed me to synchronize my, my guns. Uh, but yeah, I don't think my opponent was particularly skillful. Um, or maybe the Caterpillar is a tougher opponent than, than, uh, was, uh, than generally is given credit to it. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, here, here goes the battle. As you can see, those Drake Caterpillar shields just recharging. Actually, what I realized, you can see the shields look a little bit funny on the top left there. I actually ended up diverting power to my left shield by accident. I'll realize that in just a moment. I was like, why are, why are all my shields so low all the time? Oh, I know what I did. I hit that damn button again. <laughs> I've done that a few times. Um, but yeah, what you'll notice is when I actually do get the shields balanced out is that the recharge rate on the caterpillar shields are just really, really, really fantastic. Um, I think I'm going to experiment a little bit more with some of the weapon options uh, for the caterpillar, just to see what sort of uh, defensive capabilities it could potentially have against pirates. One versus one, like I say, versus the vanguard, which is a uh, decently powerful you know, heavy attack fighter, uh, the shields do a heck of a fine job holding up. Like I said, I don't think my opponent was particularly skilled. Um, which, you know, is good because <laughs> my, my skill level is not particularly high either. And uh, uh, certainly, it w it in the Caterpillar, I've never done a PvP fight before, so this was a first. <clears throat> so I guess it, I guess it kind of balances out. In a way.
here I did finally manage to almost throw a shield face down. I'm starting to get a little bit of confidence here that I'm actually able to hit my target. But the idea then with these larger ships with the more powerful shields uh, that I'm thinking anyways is that uh, using the ballistic weapons on here we can see I think I, I think I knocked out his engine or something. Goes into, the, into the death roll. Um, but yeah, theory being that if there's many attack runs, lots of missiles flying, and uh, potentially disruption weapons, and maybe you know accompanying uh, energy weapons, that if these larger ships, like Caterpillar, is to arc mount projectile weapons. Then as we go pass after pass after pass, slowly that hull damage gets through the shields. I might not need to actually focus fire, uh, running it down enough to deter his attack, make him run away, or something like that. That's the theory that I'm working with at the moment. I haven't tested it, but I'll do a video later. If it proves to be interesting, I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, yeah, ballistic testing on a caterpillar in PvP. Uh, just because it seems like kind of fun and silly, silly, fun and silliness. So, but I think here he's having a very hard time steering his ship. I'm pretty sure we've lost an engine, and I'm pretty sure that's why he's spinning around like crazy. Um, I'm not sure what he was using. I think he had some disruption, disruptor, disruption weapons. I think he might have a turn counter, but again, I, I don't think the, uh, the pilot here is particularly experienced. Um, or, you know, maybe that category is just a nastier ship than, than I thought. But probably it's the former. But yeah, you can see just how slowly those cannons are slowly chipping through his armor. Um, and, uh, just the two cannons on the two size twos on their own. But they're just there's not enough firepower. And since I'm missing basically every shot with a disruption cannon, I, I'm thinking a different configuration might be good. He tries an EMP burst, I think, by the looks of it there. Yeah. have enjoyed today's video a little review on the drake caterpillar it's a great ship uh, especially if you were to get a couple of turret gunners as a crew yeah it would be fun fun to do cargo runs <laughs> fun to come under attack by pirates it's a it's a tough little ship lots of firepower for a cargo hauler and um yeah okay see you all in the next video uh,